everyone. Here we are. We're going to learn more about nomenclature. We're going to learn to name and write formulas for type 3 compounds. Are you ready? Is your journal ready? Let's go. What are, what are type 3 compounds? Well, they are binary compounds. You, you already know what binary compounds are. They're made of two parts. But the difference is that these compounds are made of two nonmetals, unlike the ionic compounds that were a metal and a nonmetal. These are two nonmetals, remember, from the right of the zigzag line on the periodic table. These are not, I repeat, not. Ionic. Sometimes called molecular. The good thing here is that you do not have to remember anything about charges. So how do you know if you have a type 3 or a type 1 or 2? You look at the first element. The first element in the formula will tell you whether it is a type 1, 2, or a type 3. Notice the first element in this formula is calcium, which is a metal. Therefore, that is not a type 3. Carbon is a nonmetal. Therefore, this is a type 3. Three. Nitrogen on the right hand side of the zigzag line, another type 3. Lithium is on the left hand side in the first column. It's an alkali metal, therefore, it is a type 1. This is not a molecular compound, this is an ionic compound. Here's phosphorus on the right hand side of the zigzag line, therefore a nonmetal, therefore this is a type 3 compound. And finally here's copper, a transition metal, this is an ionic compound. Therefore out of all these, only three of them are molecular compounds, therefore type 3s. In order to write the names of the type 3 compounds, you must use the following prefixes. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. These prefixes will indicate how many atoms of each type are present in the formula. In order to name a type 3 compound, in other words, to name a molecular compound, you must remember a few rules. First of all, the first element is named as the full name of the element. The second one is named as the anion. Remember the anions, monatomic anions, end in IDE. Then we must use the prefixes to indicate how many of each atom are present. Notice, we never use mono for the first element because the one is understood. Let's try to name these two compounds. The first element is carbon, so therefore we're going to name carbon. And the second element is oxygen. We're going to name it as a, an anion, but since we only have one, it, we are going to name it mono. In, we drop the A 
and write the name of the anion, monoxide. Let's try the second compound. Notice that there are two nitrogen atoms making up this compound. Therefore, we're going to name it di, meaning two, nitrogen, just like the name of the element, And then for the second element, we are going to name it as the anion, but there are three of them. So we will use the prefix tri, meaning three, oxide, just like the anion name. And that's it. That's pretty simple, isn't it? All right, so now we're going to try to write the formulas of these type 3 compounds given the name. Remember the prefixes. You cannot forget to use prefixes for these formulas. But remember, the good thing is that you don't have to worry at all about the charges. Sorry about that. All right. Um, Let's try nitrogen. Okay, so I'm going to write, write, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the symbol for nitrogen, and I'm going to write the symbol for the oxide. Okay, and it says nitrogen monoxide. That means there's one of these and one of these. But remember, the one is understood, so we don't have to write. The formula for nitrogen monoxide is NO. Here we go, carbon dioxide. Let's try that. Carbon and I'm going to write the oxide and then worry about the prefixes. Dioxide, that means there are two oxygens in this compound. So that's carbon dioxide. And finally, iodine pentafluoride. I'm going to write I, fluoride, F. How many are there? Penta means five. So I will have five there. What if I have dinitrogen pentoxide? So I would write N dinitrogen pentoxide. I would write the, the symbol oxide and five oxygens. You think you have this on lock? Right Siobhan? Okay, so yeah, we've talked about medicines and cleaning products and all the places where you can find some of these compounds. Uh, we particularly talked about it when we talked about ionic compounds. But where else can we find these? So you're going to have to ask me tomorrow to show you a video that is entitled Colleen gets her wish. Be sure to ask me tomorrow. Okay guys, I'll see you tomorrow in class and um, we will be practicing quite a bit with type threes. Have a good night.